Welcome! This is a tutorial on doing a CMM alignment of a cylindrical part. We're going to be using PCDMIS on hexagon. This is the print of the part. You may recognize this. This is a NIMS certification part. This print is the basis for this particular thing. And we have a CAD model to go with it. The CAD model shows the part in this orientation. It could be lying the other direction, but make sure to align your axes properly to make that work. This is uh, the view of it out on the table. So we're going to get started here by opening up PC Demis. This is a fairly modern version of it. We're showing our probe tip there. We're going to start a new file. We're going to name this after the drawing uh, for this, this particular print that we just looked at. So I'm um, looking up the number here real quick. And I think we find this is 98442. Uh, we're going to use inches on this, but you could use millimeters. And you should always see machine one if you're hooked up to the, compu to the uh, machine. We're showing our basic up and down probe angle and also facing forward and facing back. It's just sort of standard angles. We're going to import our CAD model here. I uh, have it located in a file on the desktop. And here's our drawing. We're going to import it, process this, and say OK. And here we show our part. Uh, let me divorce the probe from it here. And you can see how we have our trihedron located at the bottom center of the part right here. So if we look at this drawing, we see that they're on the second cylinder down. They have datum A listed. We also have a top plane that we're probably going to use with this standing up. This is segmented into a bunch of little parts here. It's about 4.725 inches long. Uh, and that will be the basis for our work here. This is called a datum precedence table. And we're talking about the six degrees of freedom we're trying to lock down, which is X, Y, Z in rotation, U, V, and W. Uh, so we're going to start here by talking about how those rotations go around X, Y, and Z. And we're going to try to lock them down first by using plane 1 and then cylinder 1. So plane 1 will lock down our Z as if we were putting our finger on the top of the part here it prevents the cylinder from moving up or down. So we're going to put a check mark with Z. Additionally, that's going to stop rotation around the x-axis and the y-axis, or U and V. So we're going to put a check mark in each one of those boxes. Okay, now we have this cylinder here, the second cylinder down. That is actually going to be controlled in the axis, the center of that. And so we can only use that as translation uh, for X and Y. And those will be our origins. We can't, however, stop it from spinning around the center axis. So we can't lock down 6 degrees of freedom. We can only lock down 5. So that, that W, or our rotation around Z, is a question we just really can't address it, we're just going to knock it out. This just shows some of the basics here. A plane can, with uh, three hits on it will take care of translation, and one degree of translation and two degrees of rotation. A cylinder with six hits on it will control two degrees of translation and two degrees of rotation. So those are some of the things that we're looking at with regards to moving forward. This lists some of the other items here that you could have used. A circle, a point, a line, a cone, a sphere, or a torus. Those are all valid things that you can place hits on and use as control. 
So let's go back to our model here. So we're going to start by placing some hits on the top of the model. So we're going to pull program mode up and a measured plane and we're going to place with the mouse three hits on that top plane. I'm going to hit the end button and now you can see over here we have plane one listed three hits and that it is a plane. Next we're going to look at that cylinder so we're going to pick measured cylinder. We're still in program mode. We're going to place three hits around this cylinder on the same plane or very close to the same plane. So I'm attempting to place three pretty close and then three other hits minimum at random points around the cylinder. So those are six hits. I press the end button again and that will store our cylinder there as code. You can see we have cylinder one listed there and we show our six hits there. So those are the two features that we're going to use to create our alignment. So let's open up the alignment utility. We're not going to use the quick align. We're going to use the regular alignment utility. Let's just look back at the rules here real quick. Whichever feature controls two degrees of rotational freedom is your level feature. That's important to know because that's the first thing we're going to address here. We're going to pick that first plane. And we're going to go up to here to level and we are actually leveling it on the Z plus plane. This is the top of the part. So we're going to hit level. We're also going to take that and make that our Z origin but we're going to offset it by the distance of this part. Since we're measuring at the top and we want the origin at the bottom, we're going to offset it minus 4.725 inches and click origin. You can see that leaves the trihedron at the bottom of the part. We're going to pick our cylinder. Uh, oh, first the, the rotate feature here. We cannot address. There's no way to actually use that. So we're going to move past it and go to our cylinder and it is a center axis control so we're going to pick both X and Y and say origin and you can see that drops it right in the center at the bottom of the part which is what we want okay so we have the basics for basis for a manual alignment here I'm going to save the program here quickly and we're going to execute this you have to execute this portion before you move on to your DCC or else it has no idea where your part is. So you can do this either virtually if you're offline or you can do it uh, actually using the CMM with the part. So that's what I'm doing here. I have the jog box in my hand that I'm driving it around to these points and then hitting the little green check mark on the jog box to complete the feature. Here we're going around the cylinder now. I'm making the measurements around on this part and they don't have to be exact they need to be sort of approximate they show them in a particular order doesn't really matter as long as you cover those points legitimately you hit them all and they're you know roughly where you said they were they don't have to be exact it's still going to capture the cylinder enough the DCC alignment will cover this more substantially so there we've completed it Everything seems to be fine. Our trihedron didn't stray away from the part, so that's a good sign. So next up we're going to pick DCC mode here. And you can see we dropped the piece of code in. So now everything's going to run automatically. I might want as an operator bring this probe manually up above the part here or put a DCC move command in to move it to a, a safe spot. I, I didn't go ahead and do that here. So we're going to go back to programming hits. We're going to do more hits this time. So you see I have four on that top plane that I stored. Same thing, I placed the hits, hit end, the end key, E-N-D, and that stored it. And I'm going to relabel that to top Z+, plus just so I know what plane I'm talking about later when I'm reporting this out. And now we're going to go down to the cylinder here again, the same datum A cylinder, and we're going to program hits on it. 
more hits this time typically six hits is minimum you can get away with that it's better to put a few extra hits in just uh, so that it really locks down this feature because these this alignment is the basis for all measurements you're going to make from here on out so as you can see I'm staggering the hits around and I've got what seven eight hits there hit end there we have it I'm going to change this to cylinder A just so that it's uh, our datum A feature. We know which one that is. Uh, I also am going to need to put a move command in between that top plane and that cylinder there. Otherwise, it's going to try to move through the part to the next hit. So first, I'm just kind of looking at where's my trihedron and where did I place that first hit uh, so I get a sense of which direction I want to go with that. I think I actually have to move sort of back left a little bit down to the first hit there so I'm gonna do a move first just off the edge of the part if you click down here at this coordinate uh, set down at the bottom uh, within a few seconds or so it will open up the move dialog you could also have done this manually using translate mode but instead I'm just gonna use these coordinates here to move it off the part I sort of need to move it negative x, negative y about an inch and keep it up above the part at about, you know, let's say 5.2 inches just as a safe number. Um, and you can see I've played around with it here. Sometimes reading the position will set the numbers back. I don't really understand why that happens. That's sort of a glitchy PCDMS thing. but. We'll go ahead and put some numbers in here again and just hit create. And that'll move it, as you saw briefly, off to the off the part a little bit. Now we're going to move it down to the area of that cylinder. Can't really do the two things at once. You really need to do them one at a time. So I'm going to leave that X and Y, and I'm just going to lower this down to about where that cylinder is. Create it. So there we have two move points. Um, we're also due to create our alignment, but I'm going to put one more move in here just to create a safe spot for the probe when it's done. We'll bring it back up above the part. Okay, we're done with that. All right, so let's uh, let's see. We have both of our features and our moves. Let's go into our alignment utility. We have relabeled those, so we're going to do our uh, top Z plus level and we're going to make it our Z origin and put in the minus 4.725 again and we're going to take our cylinder A and make it our X and our Y origin and that's it that's all you need uh, to create that that's really the basis of it we're going to run it uh, from this point down just to make sure that everything is copacetic so I'm going to use Control u to execute this command. That will run it from the point of the cursor down. And let's see, I crashed right away. So uh, what I needed to do, which I talked about, was to actually move the probe manually up above the part. And then we'll try this again, Control u And here it's going through the motions. Now I have this set to a fairly slow speed, so it's going to kind of uh, move slowly through this process but it's making our four hits up top it's now moving to the side and down and now we're starting to make our hits around the cylinder seems to be going okay at this point we're working around that that first top plane then it will start to move down to some of those lower points So far, so good. All the hits are working. You could have done an auto cylinder on this just the same. I, I manually place the points. An auto cylinder works just the same. And, oops, I crashed right here at the end. Uh, it seems that uh, this last move command that I put in was not a bunch of happy numbers. I'm going to just edit the numbers right in place. It seems that uh, 
it didn't take the numbers just as I had specified so we'll make a little adjustment to it it's not really a big deal you can click on that line of code and hit F9 and see the same dialog box or you can just adjust the numbers right here in these fields I found that uh, some of the numbers just weren't adequate the X and Y just didn't seem correct so we'll just adjust those up and uh, I'm going to run it from this point down just to grab the alignment and uh, well it's decided that it wants to remeasure that last cylinder now <laughs> I guess uh, so let's see what happens we'll run it and down it comes and it's going to remeasure that but uh, long story short this all works out just fine uh, it makes the measurements around the cylinder it finds that the alignment is correct and the way to check that is just to uh, tip the model and see that that trihedron is centered that uh, it is exactly at the bottom of the part it will wag back and forth a little bit to show you that you haven't taken care of that last element of rotation around the z-axis but there's really nothing you can do about that that's just the nature of this you can only lock down five of the six elements uh, of freedom and that's just the nature of a cylindrical part I'm going to say this one last time and bid you all adieu I hope this was informative for you and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And uh, I'd love it if you would subscribe. Uh, we try always to do our best to give you uh, good information and a procedure to walk through. Uh, please look at some of my other videos, if you like, that cover other elements of programming. So whether we're measuring different features or whether we're reporting out I also show how to use uh, path lines and how to evaluate a collision report. So I've tried to leave information in there for everyone. Alright, thanks for viewing my video and have a nice day.